So uh, when we are asked why vaccination works so well um, in Portugal, in the case for GAT in the Lisbon area, um, I have to speak of the, the contextual factors that might have help for this to work so well. So I will do that in a quite brief, I think. Um, okay, this is not working why. That's weird. It was working before. It was working before. Now yeah. it works, yeah. Okay. As I put the next Reckon. slides, it over the presentation. So if it doesn't, I can maybe share your okay. presentation or you can do it like this, maybe without. I can do it like this. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Go on. Yes. So in the last uh, 20 years, we are doing activism in the pandemic for HIV, STIs, hepatitis, and tuberculosis, and working with key populations. So, uh, and providing services since 2011, uh, prevention services in six fixed centers and two mobile units. So this is one uh, contextual factor that works out reaching the community is that the key populations and stakeholders know us and trust us. Uh, we also provide services that interconnect with the vaccination and also provide vaccination. One of them is the integrated uh, rapid testing, where uh, hepatitis B virus non-reactive tests is linked to HPV vaccination in the National Health Service uh, centers. And another one is the um, STI appointments, where complementary vaccination recommendations to the National Vaccination Program are promoted to the key populations. Uh, in five in our uh, five in and four hour fixed centers, we provide um, on-site vaccination also. So in summary, key populations are used to get vaccination information and prescriptions and shots uh, from us. And all of this is under a cooperation agreement with a regional health authority, meaning that we are reimbursed for these healthcare provisions. So is there some sustainability of these responses to key populations locally? And also, we had a prior uh, outbreak joint action experience when we successfully, successfully participated in the 2070 hepatitis A outbreak response. Still, at that time, we did not participate in the vaccination delivery per se. Um, we did all the work, and then we referred people to the NHS vaccination uh, points. But our national vaccination program has a governance model that accommodates applications from social and private organizations to roll as vaccination uh, points. Um, this, is, this has the aim to uh, access our to reach uh, populations, but also the ability to qualify vaccination points as options for vaccination delivery in the context of outbreaks. Um, with that in mind, not the outbreak context, but to deliver HPV vaccination in uh, GATS um, and other uh, vaccines in the national health program, we submit uh, uh, our fixed centers to be approved as vaccination points. It takes a lot of time, two years, as we can see, we submitted at December 2020 and it was approved in February 2022. And with that, a checkpoint targeting MSM and intendants targeting sex workers, trans people, and migrant people were approved as vaccination uh, points and start delivering uh, vaccines for the, um, uh, the National Health uh, Program. And it was quite uh, surprising that three months later, we have an outbreak of MPOX and we were uh, pre-approved to deliver any kind of vaccines in this uh, center. So it was quite uh, useful timing. Um, we also participated with the major public health stakeholders in all requests regarding this outbreak, uh, but this interconnected team and these routes of communication and this way it was working was built upon our previous work with uh, HIV and so on. So this was, was already ongoing and this was just another infection to deal with with the other ones.
Our main uh, work focus in the MPOX was risk communication and community engagement, MPOX detection and vaccination delivery. The first uh, cases of MPOX was detected in our um, STI appointment at checkpoint. Um, and uh, with that, we started working with uh, regional and, and national health authorities to build up our stop uh, MPOX uh, response and uh, services were open consecutively for first for uh, detection of MPOX in our STI clinic after a helpline with the triage and linkage to care with nurses leading that appointments and later on the vaccination as it was available for post-exposure first and pre-exposure uh, uh, afterwards. So with all these contextual factors um, already in place, it was easy to implement vaccination in our uh, uh, centers that were used by key populations. So as we talk about eligibility determination, there was a tool that was implemented by the regional health authority because we have public and private health settings and the communication among them does not um, uh, flow <laughs> directly because they are close to the private institutions. So with the, they, uh, the regional health authority built up a flow in the teams um, that we submitted uh, the triage in that uh, form and automatically generated an email with a declaration for the patients. And there was uh, an eligible waiting list all right, automatically uh, set uh, simultaneously. So this flow allowed for the communication for the vaccination points and the regional authority and the patients all at once. Uh, we also uh, built an MPOX helpline uh, to deal with the information um, needs. And it was quite surprising that in the beginning we all were attending people uh, and mostly MSM with their information needs, but also health professionals that were um, faced upon we, with their appointments with people asking for uh, vaccination and attendance and contacted our line to get support and how to do so. So this is quite uh, helpful. Another thing that was um, uh, helpful with this helpline is that this uh, declaration um, for vaccination equals a prescription. So it was dependent only a physicians to do so this work. But in this GAT helpline, this was a task shift to nurses, which increased the number of declarations done uh, over time. So at the beginning of the dozens and after the, the task shifting, a hundreds per uh, week. The eligibility determination was uh, quite flexible at GAT. So we are not strict with the implementation of the guideline of the National Health Authority. Uh, two examples. Uh, in the first, uh, people were being vaccinated who were men left sex with men with an STI or with an HIV or doing PrEP. This was done so because there are small doses available, so we will need objective uh, indicators of risk that people need to prove of in order to get their vaccination decla declaration. But also this lead to inequalities because the health system was not able to put people on PrEP as they should as quickly. So we have a waiting list for people to get started on PrEP and they were not eligible to MPOX because they were not on PrEP, but they are waiting for it. So we call the National Health Authority and uh, requesting for this uh, criteria to be more flexible. And then uh, they said yes, and we start uh, prescribing the MPOX vaccination for those people too. And another uh, example would be for um, uh, another group was people doing commercial sex and only them, but uh, the sex on premises venues contacted us regarding the notion of uh, work medicine, because uh, this is not uh, regulated work, they were uh, at risk also there, so the owners were asking, can you vaccinate our teams? Uh, we call again the national authority and explain the situation and they agree with us and we start vaccinating these uh, uh, teams also. So saunas, bars and clubs with sex on premises uh, venues. Um, the other thing that helps with LGBT diminution to be fast was the proactive 
proactive calls. So we listed all people in our uh, checkpoint and intendant centers that were MSM, but we have an STI or an HIV diagnosis with us or that were referred to PEAR and proactively call these people if they are interested in to be vaccinated and prescribe the vaccine and book at the same time in our uh, vaccination points. The other thing and there is important to uh, make vaccination work is the booking and rebooking. First, we have to have an eligible waiting list and with the flow implemented regionally, it was a, a, a good uh, instrument too to call people who are waiting uh, longer. And we did that with a helpline from GATS, but also with support of the public health departments uh, of our region, because we were overwhelmed with um, referrals to our vaccination points. Uh, every physician could uh, make a prescription and then they have to choose the vaccination points. And most uh, physicians were selecting checkpoints as the vaccination points and not the public uh, vaccination points. The, we believe that this was a, um, a selection not by the physician only, but mainly by the person who was being uh, prescribed the vaccine. So we have a lot of people to attend in the short uh, uh, time and uh, the public health department um, lead on and help us with the booking and rebooking. That for us was what overwhelming, but for them it was not because they were doing the flu and the COVID bookings and rebookings. So uh, our uh, small amount of waiting list for them was nearly nothing with their capacity of resources. So it was quite helpful for them to help us and to uh, contact people quickly to be vaccinated. And also another thing that is a good practice is the reminders. So people do not forget their appointments in the previous day and uh, for both uh, doses. Uh, regarding specifically the vaccination itself, um, one thing that helps uh, locally is that we have uh, uh, the regional uh, public health department as only one pharmacy that, do, that does the centralized dispensing and the distribution. So we just have to ask the number of vials that we need. And in the same day, we have those vials uh, in our vaccination points. So it's uh, quite a, a peace of mind to work with this uh, kind of way. Another thing that helps to increase the vaccination was the intradermal use because one vial, five doses. But um, since we are, um, we didn't have any intradermal use before in our vaccination point, a checkpoint or intendant. We were looking to the market to see to search for low dead space uh, syringe, and we select one with a uh, almost no uh, dead space, which allow us to uh, collect six doses per vial. Uh, we shared this information with the regional authority, and this. Um, uh, equipment is now being used in other vaccination points in Portugal. So one vial can translate to six uh, doses. And the other thing that is working regarding the vaccination is that uh, all vaccination points work with uh, only one va vaccines uh, app. So all nurses registering the same system, they share the same information. So with that, we can uh, quickly confirm and work uh, towards having uh, no people with zero doses and also avoid people with more than two doses or uh, with wrong schemes under the, the interval that is recommended. Once the person leaves our vaccination appointment, it's automatically triggered. Once we have end appointment, we post vaccination information and email uh, with uh, concrete uh, care that should be followed afterwards. So the system is quite uh, automatic. It depends only on uh, uh, not in-person attendance, only for the vaccination itself, but everything else can be uh, dealt with uh, from home and with support with our helpline. And it's quite um, automatic regarding the information sharing and the information of post-vaccination to clients. So all of this can uh, be done quite quickly. This is the information uh, that was shared by the uh, National Health Authority regarding the vaccination in Portugal. That was shared in the last uh, information on meeting with community uh, organizations. And as of May of uh, 4th May uh, 2022, 63% uh, of people vaccinated in our region 
were vaccinated at checkpoint or intendant, so at GATS. And 48% of the people of the country were vaccinated in GATS. So this is quite revealing that uh, targeting services and work with community uh, organizations lead to the most uptake of our uh, populations to uh, these services, as we've seen here uh, locally. And this was what I wanted to share with you. Thank you for your attention.